This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of the Church Universal, let us make our confession to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. pray. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have brought us safely through another night into a new day and into a new week. And now we open our hearts and minds to your spirit that by coming and worshiping you this hour, we will be nourished and refreshed and ready to meet the challenges of this day and those of the coming week. And this we do ask and pray in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us all to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we ask that you receive these gifts, bless them that they would be used to strengthen the ministry of this church and serve the community in which you have called us to serve. We ask and ask this in your name, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, and it can be found on page 735 in your pew Bible. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now if you'll join me in the responsive reading from Psalm 51, found in your bulletin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Wash, Wash away, away all my iniquity. iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against, Against you, you only, have, have I sinned and, and done, done evil in your sight. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash, Wash me, and, and I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Then I will teach transgressors in your ways. And, and sinners, sinners will turn, turn back, back to you. Glory, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen.
Good morning to all who are here this day, and good morning to those who are joining us on Zoom as well. We have our listing of persons in need of prayer. There are some who are in mourning this week, as there have been several deaths that we want to uh, uh, be aware of that are in your bulletin, so please keep these persons in your prayer, these families. There are, of course, announcements there of things that are happening that you will uh, that uh, you will need to take care of if you'd like to. Especially Nancy always likes to get that list and and order those uh, lilies. So uh, please help her out in in doing that. Before we have our morning prayer, let us have some time of silent reflection, uh, and. Uh, As we give thanks to God for this day, let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, We do give you thanks for this day and our gathering, for this house of worship, for the ministry, for those who continue in ministry here, for those who worship. We lift up, though, our grateful thanks most of all for the gift of our salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the power of your Holy Spirit that works around and within us to enable us to give witness of your love. There are those on our list of prayer today who have now passed from this world and rest with you in your kingdom. And we rejoice in that as always, but we do lift up the needs of those who for them the loss is great and they mourn. We lift up the lives of those who this week, tornadoes took homes and buildings, workplaces, whole communities, and they are gathering up the pieces of their lives. May your Holy Spirit dwell in those communities, that they will feel the love of neighbor, of the compassion of friend and family, and of the help that comes to assist them. Continue to be with them. Give them hope for today and the days ahead. There are those in our world, in our lives, whose choices are different, and they've made new choices And some are good and some are not so. But be with those who are troubled in heart and mind. Give them peace. Grant, O God, your blessing upon the ministries that we have here as we serve this community. In the same way, bless our neighboring congregations as they also strive to do your will and your work. And that many will see, if not all, will see the goodness of your love and your presence through the same Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This morning, the gospel comes from the gospel of John, the 12th chapter. It begins at the 20th verse. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, in turn, went to Jesus. 
Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then... A voice from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. And Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And he said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. We travel this earth shifting sand that transcends all the reason of man. But the things that matter the most in this world, they can never be held in our hands. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary, and I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely and a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. And I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. And I believe whatever the cost. And when time surrendered and dirt is no more I'll still cling to the old rugged cross <coughs> I believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end. But faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead us at last to our friend. I believe 
in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. <coughs> as much as I love spring, the pollen doesn't love me. <laughs> Time to tell the truth. That's what the gospel lesson is today. Time to tell the truth. Let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, that hope is revealed. For indeed, a time that has been long past overdue is here, according to Jesus, and that there is nothing they need to do but to be present and watch and see what happens, that indeed he will die and he will arise. But it won't be because he was following a law. He is following who he is. It is his nature. It is what he was created for, came down for, was to give his life, to do everything, and if it, well, to do everything he could, and if it demanded his life, by golly, that's what he was going to do. That's the truth of it. There's a program that I've been watching for quite a while. Uh, it's a British program. I enjoy their humor. It's a, it's a good, just a funny kind of humor. And uh, it's uh, uh, a, a show that is called Would I Lie to You? It's much like to tell the truth, but this is Would I Lie to You? And there are three over here, three contestants, three contestants over here, and they're usually comedians, some politicians. There's a group of people of wit. And then there's the moderator. And each one on, on one side will first lift up a card and tell you something about themselves. And then the other tell about themselves. And, another, and then the other three have to ask questions to figure out which of those three stories is a lie. And it's fun because those who, who are especially good at telling a story, they are quick-minded. But those who are asking the questions will go every now and then, yeah, but a while ago you said such and such. How can you do both those things? <laughs> and so they get caught. Would I lie to you? It's so easy in this world to hear lies rather than truth. In our faith in the faith that's in the community, in the faith that exists in the world, in so much of the, of the news, we have to daily think about what is being said and, and is it a lie or is it true? And is it something that we should be concerned about? I imagine that the people of Jesus' generation were like any generation, for years and years, the grandma and grandpa passed down that story that one day God is coming. One day, one day he's coming back. And they keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And they will tell their kids the same thing and they will wait and wait and wait. We don't want to say never. But there is that dream that it's going to happen. But maybe not in their generation. But Jesus comes and he's different than any prophet they have ever heard before. Because his is not just a, a story, his is about a life that he's leading. He's not telling them one day God's going to do it. He's saying today is the day 
change is going to happen. Today is the day he makes the lame to walk, the blind to see. Today is the day. It is time to tell the truth, it seems that the gospel is saying. For in the reading from Jeremiah, we have that reminder of the promise. He proclaimed, though, that a time is coming when God will make a new covenant. Now, one might say, if, if you've got a friend who, who makes promises, 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 and you're constantly going, okay, but you said you were going to. Oh, but you said you were going to. And, and after a while, you just get to know that if it happens, it happens. Jeremiah is saying, unlike the covenant that was before, because it wasn't working out. This is a new covenant. This is a covenant unlike which God made with your forefathers in Israel when he took them essentially by the hand, took them out into the wilderness and gave them a promised land. This is unlike that. He's not going to take you by the hand. You're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to open up your heart. Because that's where he says the covenant is going to be written on your heart. And you will know that it's there. And that God is present. And there's a newness. And there is a realized hope. Not a, not a in the eventuality when we get there, but a hope that is present. That's the promise of God. He says in the gospel, the hour of truth is here. It may be because of who came all of a sudden. They're getting ready for Passover. It's Passover week. That's the feast they're there to celebrate. He's already come into the city, arriving with the great hosannas, which we will celebrate next week. But Jesus, in the midst of all these great hosannas, there are people that are wondering, where, who is he? And among those people there for the feast were Greeks. And I can imagine that they would want to go home and say, ha, if it were today, he signed my autograph book. <laughs> you know? You can just imagine there were people in Jerusalem who were wondering what's been going on. And so Jesus says, now's the hour. Bring them to me. Let me talk with them. It's okay. No more secrets, no, no unhidden thing. This is going to be the truth, the great reveal, what it's supposed to be looking like, what, what the expectation is for God. Now, this, this, I was thinking of the, the great reveal, but I know that in, the, in many of the television shows that uh, show a, a, an old home and somebody buys them and they, then they fix it all up and then there's this great reveal, you know? And you just wonder, did it all work out all right? <laughs> did they find it just as they planned it? Is everything just the way? And they walk through the house and go, oh, I would have never guessed. Oh, I would have never thought. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, it's great. I want them to go six months later and find out when they put all those nice little storage bins and shelves and all that kind of stuff because... I'm thinking, well, the laundry's still on the, on the dryer. It didn't make it into that little drawer, uh, you know, because that's, that's, you know, unless, unless somebody's popping by all of a sudden, that's when that drawer gets used sometimes. But the great reveal here is that Jesus is confident that when you realize it, it will meet your expectations, not the worldly ones. Because we know that people were still going, but no, death is not part of the thing. But Jesus is saying, this is the time for truth. The other interesting part of this, or one of the interesting parts is, how must Jesus be feeling in this? You're taking on a lot to say, I'm willing to die for people who don't really know me, who have broken all the covenants of God with the past. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Let the Greeks come and meet me. I'm ready, though he was of a troubled heart. Not because he was afraid to die, 
but because he knows people. <laughs> he knows people. Will it be sufficient to convince that it's a good thing? Fortunately, Jesus has been watching for 2,000 years, and we're still worshiping. We're still witnessing. We're still here. He was troubled, and everybody doesn't see, but enough people have seen that we're still here, following in his way. And why? Because that's the glory of the cross. When he finally says, you know, I'm troubled and this is how it's going to be, then there's a voice from heaven, like at his baptism. At the beginning of this story, where the heavens open up and the voice says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He says, you got my glory. You're doing right, son. This is it. This is the, we're going to make this work. And if God wills it, how can it not be so? Who was getting the glory, though? Not Jesus for the cross, but God gets the glory. Who is our salvation for? We get a great gift, but if we don't use it, where is the glory? The glory belongs to God. Recently, a friend of mine was telling me about his daughter, and uh, it's out in Kansas, and they've been uh, Zooming the basketball games. So I get to watch them in action and watch the people in the stands that I used to know and were members of the congregation out there, and all the kids who were little then are teenagers on the basketball court. So I know the names, and I know some of my neighbor's kids are on there, and it's, and it's fun to catch up and see how well they're doing. And one of the, my friend's daughter is, is one of the major point getters. She, she is just a marvel on the court. And that's her, in high school, she's, you know, if, if, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a sexist thing. If it was a boys basketball team, she'd be the jock on the, on the campus. But as a girl, she's just a good basketball player. <laughs> so, but, but that is, she just shines when she talks about basketball. But recently at church, he was wondering where she had disappeared to. And his wife said, well, she's gone to the restroom. She'll be right with us. And, and they were waiting and waiting. She's not out here. So mother went in to see, you know, is there a problem? And there was the daughter cradling an older woman who had passed out. And she says, what are you doing? I said, I've already called 911. Could you go tell her son? that she's passed out and I've called 911 and I'll sit with her until somebody comes to help. And my friend said, Sam, I don't care how many points she scores on a, on a goal, it's that she's living a compassion that is of Christ. She did not ignore what was there when she was needed. She is making a difference. He says, I'm more proud of that than I am of any point she makes. That's what the glory is. The glory wasn't what she did, but who she is, who she is becoming. And that's the glory we give to God. Who are we becoming? What is our purpose here? It's to give glory to God, to worship God, to be the people of God so that the cross is not for nothing. The hymn we're going to sing shortly. The last verse, were the whole realm of nature mine, were everything mine that were a present too small. It's love so amazing, so divine, demands what? Demands my soul, my life, my all. Because if it's not, then the cross isn't really there. It's all for the glory of God, a gift for us, for the glory of God. Not to follow a law, not to be the law keeper, but to become the people God knows we can be. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we give you thanks for this day once again. We give you thanks for the ways in which you touch our lives. We give you thanks for the cross of Christ and for the ways in which you lead us to live. We ask that you continue 
to use us, to strengthen us, that we would be your witnesses, all for your honor and your glory. We ask this through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now, if you will, join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Those who are able, please rise and receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us this day and forevermore. Amen. soul.